What's the creepiest place you've been? One year I worked in a haunted house that was inside a building that used to be a funeral home. The morgue was downstairs and still had the drawers. My job was to lay in the drawer and pop out when people walked by. Laying in a cramped drawer, in the dark, on cold metal, with flashes of lights and screams in the distance was probably the creepiest place. I scared so many people including a middle school-aged kid who straight up pooped his pants and a drunk college chick who peed, so it was kind of worth it. You're probably in some people's creepy stories. I hope so. I actually enjoy scaring people. The next night I got to work the hallway that leads people into the morgue. It was narrow enough to kind of ninja climb up it by putting feet and hands on both walls and I was able to get pretty parallel to the ceiling. People would walk right below me and I would either yell or drop down behind the or I only did that for half an hour before my arms got tired and got kicked in the groin. Overall a much better experience than the drawer. An abandoned mental institution in NJ. My friend brought us there and we wandered the grounds and went in a few buildings, including the morgue. The offices still had patient files and the pediatric area still had kids' artwork. It had been abandoned for about eight years at that point. It was really creepy and also really sad. Back during Vietnam my unit got it hard in the jungle. We split and one group went to help find the VC who attacked us. We stayed behind to evacuate the wounded. The four able bodies were supposed to hop on with the injured and go. We load up and one chopper doesn't make it back so we four can't load we would be grossly overweight. It's late son is low pilot says he will drop these guys and come back for us. So we divvy up ammo from the wounded and squat in open field. 20 minutes goes by then an hour. Two hours it's now pitch black and we're seated in a grassy field. We spent the whole night looking at every stick and leaf THST twitched. You could feel the tension. We sat in a star back to back with our rifles pointed out. We knew we couldn't repel the attack but we decided to take as many as we could before being over. Run. If overrun we would pull grenades and do everyone in the VC for 25 feet in every direction. The tension was thick. Sunrise we heard the Huey come. On the way back he had a hydraulics issue they worked all night to fix it so we could get flown out. ASAP. All four dustoffs had issues and took bullets so that is why the other one didn't return the first time. That field of grass was extremely spooky even if it was just in our minds. You must have been wide awake the whole fucking night. Every rustle of grass, every bug flapping its wings got a muzzle pointed at it. No sleep was had by anyone. We didn't even get up to pee just hung it out and whizzed in the grass. I went to a rest stop at 1 a.m. outside Springfield, Illinois a few years back. Went to the restroom and there was blood everywhere. It looked like something got slaughtered. I've never hightailed it out of somewhere so quickly beforehand. Update. So a bit of context. This occurred at a rest stop along HWY 55 outside of Springfield. This was a very old rest stop. Not a gas station. It happened in October, maybe November, of 2014, pretty close to Halloween, probably a junkie that shot up wrong and blew a vein. Unfortunately, pretty common. I worked at a gas station for a while and once walked into our restroom to what looked like a brutal murder scene. Blood on everything, walls, ceiling, doors, literal puddles across the floor. Called the cops and they found the needle in one of the puddles of blood. Edit. There's been some confusion with my phrasing. I did not mean that it is common for users to blow a vein. What is common is for drug users to use gas station arrest to stop bathrooms to shoot up in. Till this happens, I explored the abandoned Six Flags in New Orleans. It was closed for Katrina and never opened again. While my friends and I were there we found everything essentially as it was left four years prior. Computers in the admin office. Tickets in admission booth. Even jars of fucking pickles in the concession stands. Everyone thought Katrina would just pass by with only some damage. Sadly it didn't so no one went and cleaned everything up. 
Greater than everyone thought Katrina would just pass by with only some damage. One of the more stupid decisions in my life. Yeah, yeah, I've been through a bunch of hurricanes here before. I'm stuck with beer, water, red beans, rice, etc. There's no reason to leave town. But yeah, that sucked. I had a friend who cleaned out and sold foreclosed homes for a living. He once took me on a ride to a house he had a photograph for the bank after it had gone into foreclosure. From the moment we got there, it was unsettling. It was in the area of a ski resort, and the neighborhood was wealthy. But once we stepped inside, it was clear that it had been used as a kind of boarding house for resort staff. Numbers outside each of the bedroom doors. Large closets, weird spaces turned into bedrooms. The place was filthy with black garbage bags everywhere, pizza boxes, booze bottles, like clearly a party house for staff, but recently abandoned. At one point, I was on the ground floor, and my friend was in the basement, when I suddenly got full body chills. I was standing in the kitchen and there was a bathroom next to it with the door closed, and I somehow knew that there was someone hiding in that bathroom as here at the very same instant. My friend called me down to the basement where he had found a back corner which had been converted into another sleeping area. There was a television still on, just showing static, and a kitchen knife on a crate next to the mattress. That was the moment I stepped directly behind my 6 feet 4 inches, 300 pounds friend and told him we had to get the fuck out of there. I'm pretty sure the home was being used as an illegal boarding house for undocumented resort workers. And I honestly felt bad for the terrified kid who was still squatting in the basement. But I sure as hell didn't want to find Hi Monsieur. Damn, that's crazy. I wonder if you subconsciously heard the person's breathing or moving or maybe your subconscious was able to visually pick up on signs of living in all that chaos. I think you're absolutely correct about subconscious picking up on things completely unrelated, but I do cybersecurity investigations and so much of it is trusting your gut on the tiniest inconsistencies that you don't realize you noticed. The all at once everything else connects. Your comment makes a ton of sense to me. Removed. Oh god no. I would have run screaming from that place. I was on a family vacation to Atlanta. About 1972, we went to visit some cousins of my grandmother's twin sisters, never married, in their 80s. The house was in a rundown neighborhood. From the street you'd think it was abandoned. Overgrown yard, part of the roof caved in, boarded up windows. Inside, it was all antiques and furniture from the 30s and 40s, slowly deteriorating, and it looked as though they had dusted in years wallpaper peeling, old portraits half fallen, looking up to the second floor from the stairs, just cobwebs and collapsed ceilings, they said they hadn't been up there in years, and definitely rat noises, they both looked and lived like ghosts, and seemed half mad, very civil and proper but off, as an 8 year old, I was terrified, especially when one of them joked and said, you should leave him here, he can live with us, I burst into tears, and we left. Have you seen Grey Gardens? There's both a documentary and a film. It's about some relatives of the Kennedys who were once very well off, but were very eccentric and their estate fell into disrepair. The entire estate got condemned. I believe, the documentary now parody on Netflix is pretty fantastic too. Sandy Passages My own attic when I was eight. Shut the lights off on your way out and sprint down the steps like the ceiling is collapsing behind you. Whoever says childhood is fun and beautiful is wrong. It's terrifying. Yeah, fuck all basements and attics and sheds that have a light switch or pull cord. Some distance inside and not right at the door. More or less a combination of creepy and sad. But Cambodia went with family to see Angkor Wat. Huge temple, an absolute marvel, was featured in Tomb Raider I believe, and stopped in the town center for a bite to eat with our guide. 
We wandered away from the guide just to explore a bit and we were approached by a young girl, 15 to 16, carrying what looked to be a sleeping toddler. She asked us to buy milk for her baby and we obliged because hey, babies need food. Just as we were about to walk into the store our guide spots us and tells us to get in his car. We used it for transportation to and from a bunch of temples. The girl then starts screaming profanities at us and the guide and we pile into our car. She started banging on the windows of the car, while still screaming. After the door was closed, and surprisingly enough the toddler still didn't wake up. We asked our guide WTF just happened and he relayed this to us. Apparently, in Cambodia, and some other countries, gangs will profit off of not only sex trafficking from children but also a form of pity. Trafficking. They will take a small child, toddler, and drug them so they look as though they're sleeping. They'll pass the child off to a young girl who will beg for food, money, etc. and pose as the toddler's mother. Then, she'll pass the child off to a new girl who will repeat the act. They do this until the child wakes up, will feed them, and then start the process again. As the toddlers get older they'll be taught to try and sell things to tourists. If they fail to meet a quota they'll sometimes lose limbs fingers, hands, arms, legs, and will then run a story about how they've stepped on an old landmine. This is actually somewhat possible as the country is still reeling from the impact Pol Pot had and there are still unearthed landmines. But the issue is that less than 1% are close to the main city, Anger Wat which is where a majority of these children were. We were shocked to say the least. This seemed kind of far-fetched but what else would we believe? We did some research online and found stuff about the sex trafficking but not much about the toddler swapping and child mutilation. When we went into town the next day, with our guide, what did we see? The same toddler being passed to a different girl. Still knocked out, still in the same clothing. Definitely creepy. I love the Angkor Wat and thought it was beautiful but I don't plan on going back there any time soon. Oh my god this breaks my fucking heart on so many levels. I wanted to help but there's literally nothing I could have done. It hurts knowing this is still likely going on and is still a huge problem this year the country. Literally has 50% of its population less than 18, that's how badly they've been devastated by that dictator. I think the worst thing for me was that we literally had everything confirmed the next day. That poor child doesn't stand a chance simply because people are greedy and evil. It's because of things like this that led me into my current profession. Social work. Because at least then I could do some good in the world and help those who can't help themselves. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.